everybody, welcome to Firewife Lawyer Mom. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today, we're gonna talk all about independent learners and we're gonna talk about how I encourage independent learners in my homeschool through something called the morning meeting. So stay tuned. to my channel thank you so much for clicking on this video if you love these videos if they bless you please make sure to hit the subscribe button I love growing this community of homeschooling homeschooling fathers and mothers that really want to take on their children's education and join this amazing adventure I have been homeschooling for this is my third year we are pandemic homeschoolers so we began during the global pandemic um, we just didn't send our kids back we loved the homeschooling we loved how amazing it was how freeing it was how um, it, it just was so great for our family and we just love this journey and we can cannot wait to see what the future holds with it but today we're going to talk all about independent learners why is it that is it important that it is important to have an independent learner come out of your homeschool well one of the things that I felt was very challenging at the beginning of my homeschool days was the idea of homeschooling multiple children that are in totally different grade levels and so that was one of the things that I'm like well if I'm gonna do this how am I gonna be able to teach children you know that have totally different needs in their schooling in general in their education so I wanted to come up with a way that I can encourage them to be self-taught independent learners now why is it important to have that well if you if you've been in college or any type of higher education you will see that for the most part when you go to college you're going to be in a classroom with maybe a hundred, maybe 150 or 200 students in a large auditorium. You're gonna hear a professor giving their lecture and basically you hear the lecture and you have to go home and kind of figure it all out because when it comes time to either doing an assignment or taking a midterm or a final exam, you really have to, you're not gonna have the professor to go to and to call on the phone and say, hey, can you go over this concept again? Or can you go more in depth into this? Because a lot of times these professors really don't have that time to be one-on-one. -on -one. So it's really important that you teach your students to learn how to be independent learners, how to figure stuff out, how to teach themselves material, because that is a skill that even for me, who I am a lawyer and I would consider I went all the way to the top of the educational totem pole, if you, so to speak. Even I really struggled with that skill and I went to school my whole life. I, didn't, I wasn't homeschooled. And one of the skills that I felt I really struggled with and had to kind of learn on my own was how to teach myself material. And so I really feel that it's important that as children go up in grade levels or up in age and maturity that they start to kind of take on the reins of their own education themselves. It's really important for me. And so what I wanted to do from the get-go was take these tools that I knew that I needed and that I had and that my children needed and start to bring these tools into my homeschool. So it's really important that we recognize the importance of independent learners and how to teach yourself material. So what I decided to do was my, I started homeschooling when my oldest was in third grade and I started to little by little let go of the reins. I started to have her do some work on her own. Obviously with my supervision, with me coming in and grading and correcting and all of those things. But my goal was by the fourth and fifth grades to have my child do as much as she could on her own without me having to actually sit with her and teach the material and go over the material and have her do the assignments in front of me because like i said i have two students that i am homeschooling so my younger one who's in second grade and has some learning challenges i do need to have a little bit more focused education with her because of the needs that she has but my other daughter who's a little bit more independent i knew that i could be able to give her the tools and that she would have the discipline to be able to learn independently so how do i do this so what i do is I have what's called a morning meeting. And this is something that I developed over time. I tweaked it. I, you know, changed it a little bit here and there as the following last two years of my homeschooling journey, I have kind of 
made it to a point where we have established between me and my daughter a really great system through this morning meeting. So what is the format of the morning meeting? So what I do is every morning we school from Monday through Friday and every morning we have a meeting. Our meeting lasts about an hour to an hour and 20 minutes. Pretty much that's like the max. That would be an hour and 20 minutes and that's if we have you know something that we're really stuck on that we kind of need to review again that's when it'll it'll last but usually it's between an hour and an hour and 20 minutes so the first step in the morning meeting is to make sure that your child prior to the start of the school year has a student planner now this is my daughter's student planner it's a weekly planner and basically for our morning meeting she will come and bring out her morning planner and she will be ready to write her assignments. So the, what I love about this planner, and this one I got like at Target, it's great because it has, each day has two different columns. So on one side, she will write her assignments for the day, where I will get into that part of the format of our morning meeting. And on the left side, she's gonna write any questions that she may have from the day before. Because once we have our morning meeting every day, that one, one once a day morning meeting, we don't really discuss anything about school unless there's like a very quick question. We don't really discuss anything. She works everything independently until we have the morning meeting the next day. That's where whatever questions she may have, she will write those down in her plan. Now, why is it important that she do that? Because number one, it's teaching her the skill that if she has questions for the professor in college the next day, she will have to write those down. She can't call the professor on the phone right away, right? She's not gonna have the professor living in her home. So she writes those questions down for the next time she goes to class or she has her morning meeting, I will answer those questions for her. Also an important thing about having these questions that she has written down for the next day is that it's not going to cause interruption between me teaching my younger daughter. Because one of the things I found that I had to tweak was that we would have our morning meeting, but then there was like 20 questions once I started with my other daughter schooling her that would constantly cause a disruption in her learning. And so what I have told her to do is that if she has questions about any kind of problems in math, any kind of problems in any of her work, she would either circle that problem and then write the page number in her planner and it will tell me that it'll tell her and remind her the next day, hey, I had a question on page 67, this problem. And so that is kind of a way that she can keep herself accountable to what she needs help with and also helps me with accountability in making sure there's nothing that she is doing that is not being covered or not being addressed, any issues that she may be having. And so that's why it's important that your child have some sort of planner, some sort of notebook that she brings to her morning meeting every day. So that's number one. So the format of the morning meeting. So we meet the first thing in the morning that we do after our morning chores, after we make our bed, get dressed, and I make all of my children get dressed every morning because we take school seriously around here. We don't school in our pajamas. Now, if you school in your pajamas, that's totally okay, every family is different, but I have found that for us, when we are dressed, we are our hair is done, we are ready for the school day, it kind of prepares us mentally. And especially for me, because I work from home, and it's important that I even get dressed so that I can kind of take my work time seriously when I go into my work time. So they get dressed, all of that. I have my younger daughter, so you ask, what does the other child do while you're in this morning meeting? Well. I have my other child doing an independent activity, something that I strew for her, whether it be like centers that I prepare or um, she works on her handwriting, which is something that she can do independently, her spelling words, I have her write her spelling words in her notebook. So I always have my younger ones doing something. Now, if you have preschool children, you could bring out blocks or you can bring out some kind of a manipulative, anything like that. Now also, this morning meeting can be done if you have multiple children that are in fourth grade or above. So that's kind of the age range that I recommend you start this morning meeting process is probably around fourth grade to fifth grade. And it all depends on your child's maturity level. Obviously, every child is different. But I felt, for me, my child was ready by fourth grade. So what does the morning meeting entail? So the number one thing that I do, the first thing we do is we sit down and I dictate her assignments for the day. My child pretty much does all of her work 
and you guys can see the curriculum in I will link my video for the curriculums that we choose for fifth grade but she does the majority of her work on her own uh, the only thing that I actually teach in the mornings are religion and uh, history and that uh, religion history and that's it pretty much um, and then I do a finance class for her we do finance Fridays so I teach a financial unit where we talk about economics and budgeting and all that kind of stuff and I could do a separate video on that if you really like it leave a comment below and I will do a video on that so the first thing that we do is I dictate her assignments for the day so she sits with her planner she opens it up and I will just say you know you have to do phonics page 35 critical thinking workbook page whatever so I just sit and I dictate the assignments the second thing that I do after she has written down her assignments for the day and she knows what she needs to do then it is our answer question period. So that is when she comes back and says, hey, I had these questions. So that's why it's important that they write down in their planner on the other column that I showed you, what are the questions that you had from yesterday's work? Okay, I had a question in math. So she has a problem. We go through that problem. I go on my whiteboard and I, we break the problem down and I you know, find out what it is that she had questions on. And so that is the time period that we do that. The next thing I do is for 30 minutes, I teach either a lesson on religion. Uh, we have catechesis in our home, so I do a religion lesson on Mondays and Wednesdays, and on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I do a 30 minute, 30 to 40 minute history lesson. I chose those subjects because those are the subjects that I really want to be hands on with. I love history. I am a political science major. I'm very good with social studies and civics. And so those are the um, subjects I like to teach. I, I very much love teaching our faith to our children. That is super, super important. If anything that we do all day, if we do our scripture studies and our catechesis, I have felt that we have done a full homeschool day because again, you can learn education, but learning the faith and learning about God and learning about the history of our country, that's something that is just really important for us. So we do that lesson 30 to 40 minutes. And then after that, we are done. Our morning meeting is done. She goes off independently. Now you may ask what it is that we do for math and how are you not, you know, how, what have you done to outsource math? Well, we use Saxon math for our curriculum and we use Nicole the math lady who is my angel who has saved me from teaching math. Uh, she is a wonderful woman who has a website where she has taken all of the Saxon textbooks, I think from third grade onward, I believe it's third or fourth grade onward, and she actually does short videos between seven, five and seven minutes long where she breaks down each lesson and teaches the child the lesson she does practice questions with them, and I could do a separate video on her, but she is wonderful. I will leave her link. If you are doing Saxon math and you want some help, I will leave her, her link on the description box below. And so she goes off and does her work independently, and that's it. And that is our morning meeting. We have taken care of questions. We've taken care of any issues. Um, it's just a time where I get to pour into my daughter, give her her fill where she feels that, I am with her and, and helping her and supporting her through her education and also at the same time growing her skills in independent learning. So I highly recommend a morning meeting. It's really, really awesome. It has revolutionized our homeschool because now I can, once our morning meeting is done, I can focus on my other daughter for pretty much the rest of our homeschool day and she gets that fill. She feels that she's been you know, tended to and her needs have been met in our homeschool morning meeting. So let me know if you guys do a morning meeting yourselves. And if you do, if there's something that maybe I don't do that you guys do that you think is helpful, please leave it in the com comments below. If you have any questions about how I do the homeschool morning meeting, please let me know as well. I would love to help out. But again, independent learning, super, super important. Thank you so much for clicking on this video again. And I hope this was helpful. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.